Hi class, let's do some linear algebra. Today I want to start up right where we left off. We had a matrix A that is 1, 1, negative 2, 4, and we were looking at the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this matrix. And we found that 1, 1 is an eigenvector of A belonging to the eigenvalue 2. And 1, 2 was an eigenvector of A belonging to the eigenvalue 3. Here's something that I want you to notice. If we take the eigenvectors and use them as columns of a matrix, and we found the determinant of that, we would get 1 by 2 minus 1 by 1, which is 2 minus 1, which is 1, which is definitely not 0. What this tells you, of course, is that 1, 1 and 1, 2 are linearly independent vectors. And the upshot of that is that the eigenvalues, the set of eigenvalues here, 1, 1, and 1, 2, form a basis for R2. You might ask yourself, does this always happen? Here's the question. When do the eigenvalues, excuse me, when do the eigenvectors of an n by n matrix form a basis for Rn. By the end of this lesson, hopefully we'll have at least a partial answer. All right, let's start off. As usual, A is an n by n matrix, and we're going to prove a theorem. Theorem 34. So if, say, lambda 1 through lambda k are distinct eigenvalues, for A, and x1 through xk are the corresponding eigenvectors, as in x1 is an eigenvector belonging to the eigenvalue lambda1, etc., then, then we claim that x1 through xk are linearly independent. Let's prove it. Proof. Okay, so we have x1 through xk, and we don't know if they're linearly independent. So we know that their span has some kind of dimension and that's going to be less than or equal to k, but we don't know if it's k. And if it's k, then these guys will be linearly independent. In the meanwhile, let's just say it's r. All right, that's our setup. We may prune this. We may prune this spanning set to a basis. So for example, we can throw out vectors until we have r left, and these r will be linearly independent. And this is by theorem 24.7, if you're paying attention. Um, so that, uh, with reordering and renumbering, without loss of generality, we can say that x1 through xr are linearly independent. Okay, we're going to proceed by contradiction. So assume to the contrary that R, the dimension of the span of the vectors, is strictly less than K. Then this means that X1 through XR, and then if we were to add on another vector, XR plus 1, this would be linearly dependent. This is by theorem 27.1. 
Okay. What does it mean to be linearly dependent? This means that there exists a vector C1 through CR, which is non-zero, such that C1 x1 plus through CR xr plus CR plus 1 xr plus 1 is the zero vector. All right. This is important enough. We're going to use this later, so let's call this equation 1. There's a few things that I want you to notice about equation 1 before we move on. So notice, A, that CR plus 1 is not 0. If it were 0, then C1 through CR would be the non-zero vector, and X1 through XR would be linearly dependent, right? Because the last term in the, the left-hand side of this equation would vanish, and the right-hand side being equal to the zero vector would mean that x1 through xr are linearly dependent. That's a contradiction, of course, so cr plus 1 is non-zero. The second and last thing that I want you to notice about this is that since cr plus 1 is non-zero, at least one of the C, C1 through CR is also non-zero, right? So the whole left-hand side has to add up to the zero vector. So since CR plus 1 is non-zero, CR plus 1 times the vector XR plus 1 is non-zero. So for the left-hand side to add up to zero, something else has to be non-zero as well. Okay, here we have equation 1. The first thing that we want to do is calculate A, our matrix, times equation 1. All right, so on the left-hand side, we've got A times equation 1 in terms of the vectors. On the right-hand side, we've got A times the zero vector. Matrix multiplication commutes with scalars and distributes across the plus sign. So we've got C1A, X1, CRA, XR, plus CR plus 1, AXR plus 1. Right. Okay. But remember what these things are. X, the XIs are eigenvectors of the matrix. So we can actually evaluate this pretty easily. We've got C1 lambda 1 x1 plus CR lambda r xr, CR plus 1, lambda r plus 1, xr plus 1. And on the right hand side, we've just got the zero vector. Okay, so this is important enough that we're going to call this 2. All right, we're going to put 1 and 2 together. Um, just to remind you, 1 is this equation, C1 x1 plus CR xr plus CR plus 1 xr plus 1 is equal to the zero vector. And 2 is, as we just said, C1 lambda 1 x1 plus CR lambda r xr C R plus 1, lambda, R plus 1, X R plus 1 is equal to the zero vector. We're going to calculate 2 minus lambda R plus 1 times 1, and we're going to gather the like terms. Here's what we're going to get. Okay. We're going to get C1, lambda 1 minus lambda r plus 1, times x1, CR, lambda r minus lambda r plus 1, times xr, plus CR plus 1, lambda r plus 1, minus lambda r plus 1, xr plus 1. And on the right hand side, we've got 0 and 0. Here's the 0 vector. All right. Let's evaluate. This is 0. 
all the eigenvalues are distinct. So this is not zero and this is not zero. Okay, so let's look at this a little bit. And just looking at this portion of the equation that's left being equal to the right hand side, we get a contradiction. Because this is a non trivial linear combination of x1 through xr that sums up to the zero vector. This is a contradiction since x1 through xr are linearly independent. Okay, we've arrived at our contradiction. What did we contradict? We contradicted the fact that r was less than k. So we can conclude that r is k. This means that the dimension of the span of x1 through xk is k. And this means that x1 through xk are linearly independent. Great. QED. End of proof. Here's the takeaway. Distinct eigenvalues give rise to linearly independent eigenvectors. So when we asked ourselves the question, when do eigenvectors of an n by n matrix uh, form a basis for Rn, we have a partial answer, or one case in which we know this happens, it definitely happens when there are n distinct eigenvalues. Definitely when there are n different eigenvalues. All right, why do we like this? Well, here's our application. We're going to use this fact to diagonalize matrices. The diagonalization of matrices. That's next.